I'm Kath. Welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me for this video. This video is a sewing makes video. So in this video I'm going to be talking about all of the things I sewed in the month of June. And I was going to say all of the garments but actually I've sewn a couple of non-garment items too. So this is a real mix that I've got to share with you today. And I'm trying to film a monthly makes video at the moment so to just sort of do a summary of my makes every month. A while ago I sort of dropped off from doing regular makes videos and too many makes built up and it was a bit overwhelming and I wasn't sure how to sort of break it down and sort of share them with you so I thought if I start doing it on a monthly basis again that'll work really well. And I think I've got about six things to share so yeah that seems like a reasonable amount to include in this video hopefully. So that is what I'm going to be talking about today and I'm looking forward to sharing with you what I've been sewing. But I'll start off the video as ever with what I'm wearing today. And today here in the south of England is another lovely sunny day. We've been really lucky with the weather over the last couple of weeks. The sun has been shining pretty much every day. And actually the last couple of days have been particularly nice because we finally got a bit of a breeze. It had been a little bit close and a bit sort of humid feeling but today is nice and refreshing. And I've got on a summery dress that is made in a viscose fabric, so it's quite nice and swishy in the breeze on the school run this morning. And I made this dress using this pattern here, which is the Hinterland dress pattern by So Liberated. Um, it's a bit tatty, this pattern envelope, because I've used this one a few times. It's a pattern I really like. It's a woven dress pattern, and it's quite a versatile one because it's got quite a few um, different options built into it. It's basically a woven dress with a sort of semi-fitted bodice and a gathered skirt. It's got a bit of a scoop neck, as you can see, and it's designed to have a button placket down the front, which you can either um, just add on the bodice or you can do it all the way down the bodice and the skirt. Um, with my version, as you can see, I did a little mini hack just to omit the button placket, and it was really straightforward. It basically just involved taking the front bodice pattern piece and cutting um, the fabric on the fold um, so you just omit the packet <laughs> so it's quite simple uh, but it's a really nice pattern you can make it as you can see on the front sleeveless or with a sort of elbow length sleeve or a short sleeve and I've got the short sleeve version on today and the neckline's finished with bias binding which is a finish that I quite like as you can see I just used the, own, the same fabric for this bias binding which I, I quite like having the bias binding matching the fabric so I quite enjoy making my own bias binding out the fabric um, and yeah, the version I'm wearing today, I made this lovely viscose fabric. This was around a lot, a lot of online fabric um, shops seemed to stock it a couple of years ago. I remember they had it in a few different colourways. There was this really pretty, deep sort of ready pink colourway that I loved. And part of me wished I got a bit of that too. And then there was maybe like a cool bluey grey colourway. And then this colourway, which I couldn't resist, which is this mustard colour. And it's got this animal print on and what I particularly liked was the little pops of hot pink against the mustard. I love a pink and yellow combination so yeah I just had to get some of this fabric. And I remember being quite pleased with myself with this dress because I remember only having 1.5 metres of this fabric and I managed to squeeze out a dress including pockets. Um, and I remember being quite happy about that because I thought I don't know why I only bought 1.5 metres at the time. Um, because it's nice to have two metres, I think, for a dress, just so you've got more flexibility in terms of what you want to make. And I wasn't sure I'd be able to squeeze out 1.5 metres, but I did, so <laughs> I was quite pleased. Um, yeah, so it's just got the Hinterland pattern with no um, no buttons down the front, and I've got a little waist tie on just to cinch it in the waist. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. So I just cinched it in nicely. I think the pattern does include possibly... Um, pattern pieces for cutting a and the ties around the waist but I made extra skinny ones I'll untie so you can see just extra skinny ones because I thought that would work well in this fabric and it's just got a gathered skirt that comes to just around my knee length so or maybe just above the knee I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on because it's viscose it's nice and light and airy for this weather and I just really like the fit of the hinterland dress I should mention the sizing as well it's got a really big size range it goes from US zero up to a 34 I believe I've got it up on my computer yeah up to a bust of 58 and a half inches so a good size range on this one and I've always sized down one size just because I think it's designed to be a little bit loose fitting this one it's not designed to be too fitted and I wanted it to be a bit more fitted so I sized down one size and I find that fits quite nicely and actually 
even around the shoulders there's still a bit of room because I do find sometimes if I size down the shoulders can end up a little bit tight but on this one I don't find they are I find it's a really nice fit so that is what I'm wearing today but anyway let me move on now to what I've been sewing in June. So I thought I'd start off by sharing my most recently finished make as it's nice and fresh in my mind and this one is one I haven't shared on YouTube yet because I only finished a couple of days ago. I was actually quite sad to finish it because I was really enjoying sewing it so I was almost a bit disappointed when it came to an end even though I'm quite happy with how it turned out. But it is a, an item I made using a kit from Guthrie Garney, one of their sewing society kits. And I'm sure you know they release two kits each month and they include in the kit a pattern and the fabric and notions, everything you need to make up the garment as well as a hints and tips video that Lauren's done to kind of give you extra pointers on how to go about sewing the particular project. And I've sort of admired these kits going by for quite a while, but never bought one until this month. So I was quite excited to get my first kit. And the one I went for is this one here, which is their Luskin Tire bag pattern. I think it's their first ever kit to feature a natural pattern by Guthrie Garney. It might be their first pattern, I'm not sure. Um, but I just saw it and thought that just looks like such a handy thing that I could really use in my life. It's for this Lusk Tire bag, which is this really oversized, hold everything type of bag that's designed to sort of fit everything you need in, take it out today to the beach or the park or wherever you're going. And I just thought it looked really pretty in the fabric choice they had, but also really practical. And I haven't sewn a bag for ages, so I thought it was a project I quite fancied getting my teeth stuck into. So. Yeah, I ordered this kit um, and I yeah, really, really enjoyed sewing it. And I'll show you my finished Luskin Tire bag. I've got it here. It was just such a joy to sew, to be honest. The instructions, really good. Um, and I quite like how methodical bag making is. Lots of straight lines and precision. I quite enjoyed that. So yeah, here is my Luskin Tire bag. As you can see, the fabric I went for is this floral fabric. I think it's called Neon Garden. It's a bit brighter in colour than it seems to be coming up on the camera. It's got some really pretty colours in it, this kind of lovely sort of mustardy yellow colour. It's also got some metallic threads going through it, you can probably see as well, which are really pretty. It's a jacquard fabric, I think it's a cotton poly blend. So that's the fabric I went through, I thought it was really pretty. Um, and here's my bag, so it's got these lovely straps that go all the way around to the bottom to add sort of a bit of extra, I guess, security to sort of holding everything in there. It's got little pockets on each side, this is just a sort of simple pocket that's lined. Um, and then the other side, it's got a pocket with a zip. Hopefully you can see it there, a little zip there you can open up. So it's quite handy for storing maybe like your mobile phone, your keys and things in that pocket. And then inside, um, it's just really roomy and it's got this cool drawstring top bit. So you can kind of pull it um, tight and sort of keep all your possessions in. They won't sort of fall out with that nice and closed up. And I love this little detail of adding a little tab at the end of the drawstring which I thought was going to be really fiddly to sew, but actually Lauren recommended in the instructions using a, um, what do you call it? I've forgotten the name of it now. Let me find it at the end. A hump jumper, which I have that came with my machine. And I used that to sort of get myself going sewing the little tabs and it worked so well. So I definitely recommend that if you've got anything small and fiddly to sew, just pop the hump, bump, hump jumper behind it. And it really helped get the machine going rather than sort of struggling to get started and sort of get hold of the fabric. So. Yeah, we love that little detail, little ends of the ties there. But this bag was a really, really enjoyable So I found, I, I sort of expected that the Guthrie Garney instructions would be nice and clear because I always feel that they, everything they do is such high quality um, and the instructions were really good. It, it all followed through really nicely. Um, the fabric was lovely actually. It felt quite soft when, I, when it arrived and I was thinking, is this bag going to end up really floppy and not that substantial? But actually, once you've interfaced all of the pattern pieces, they really give it a bit more... Um, sort of, I guess, rigidity, is that all the right word? They make it feel a bit more substantial and actually it starts to feel like a proper sort of solid bag. I don't mean solid in terms of not moving, but just a bit more of like a quality bag and the fabric just feels like really nice fabric suitable for a bag rather than something a bit more softer, which is what it felt like initially before the interfacing. So the interface was included in the kit and it worked with, I think it was a cotton interface, and it was really nice. So yeah, it sewed up really nicely. There are a few fiddly bits, I guess in certain zip, was a little bit fiddly but actually I felt found it went in really well and the instructions made it really easy for how to insert it. I think the fiddliest bits I found were um, first of all putting the interfacing in and ironing it all. It took quite a while to make sure all of the pieces of fabric were ironed onto the interfacing and secured really well like fused really well 
It's not my favourite part of the sewing process ever attaching interfacing, but I sort of forced myself to take it slowly and carefully and make sure that all pieces of interfacing were really securely on. And then the bottom of their bag, the sort of the bottom of the bag has this sort of, sort of structure to it. You can see it's nice and sort of stable, and that's achieved by a piece of um, what's called buckram interfacing, which again came in the kit. It's not like any interfacing I've ever seen before. It's very thick, and you have to kind of pop it in the bag and iron it into the bag at one point, which is quite fiddly getting the iron in, into all the different corners and getting it all ironed down to make sure it's sort of stuck on nicely. Again, it's just one of those things I had to take quite a lot of time over and just spend a few just spend quite a while going over bits and making sure every little bit was nicely secured down but it was worth spending the time and the other thing that i found a little bit fiddly was that you kind of end up with your bag um sort of inside out you have to kind of pull it out to the right way through the lining and you do that through a little hole somewhere in here under here where the where the sort of drawstring piece attaches to the lining and then the final stage is or one of the final stages is sort of sewing a line of stitching all the way around the bag to sort of secure the top in place so it doesn't roll in and out but also that stitching needs to catch the hole that you've left to be able to turn the bag out and I found that quite hard to make sure I caught that fabric I had to unpick a little bit and re-sew because a little bit of the fabric hadn't quite caught and I still had a little hole there so there are a few little fiddly bits to it but other than that it was a real joy to sew really enjoyable it felt like it was quite methodical to work through it and I love this bag as you can see it's really quite large it's actually a bit larger than I was expecting and I was quite pleased about that because I think it will hold so much stuff. And because it's made out of this lovely, fairly lightweight jacquard fabric, or it's not super heavy, it means the bag isn't too heavy in itself. So I think you're not starting with quite heavy bag and then adding lots of stuff to turn it into like a really heavy bag to carry. So it's quite a nice weight to it. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed sewing. I love the floral fabric and I think it's really pretty against the creamy straps. Um, Oh, and one thing I should mention actually is I found the service from Guthrie and Garney to be so good because when I got to the point of um, putting my drawstrings in for my drawstring ties in here, this cord, when I came to the point of measuring the cord, it said in the pattern you need two 1.25 metre pieces. And I measured my cords and it was slightly too short. I had one long piece and I think I cut it in half actually and each piece came up slightly too short by about seven centimetres or something. So I phoned Guthrie and Garney and they were so good. They um, just got me, um, they put some more cord in the post straight away, first class, and it actually arrived the next morning. So I didn't have to wait any time before I could finish that final stage of putting the cord in. Um, but yes, yeah, so they just, they were really great about getting that sorted straight away and really apologetic. And I just thought the service was really good, how they rectified that little slight, um, slight something that wasn't exactly right in the kit. They did a really good job of getting it sorted, I thought. So I was really happy about that. Oh. And I've got to add, I don't usually add labels to my um, makes, but I thought this little label is so cute and it was a, gar um, a bag, so I thought I couldn't not add it on. Hang on, can you see it? Probably I'll put it the right way up. I use this little me made label that came with the kit. I just couldn't resist adding it. I think it's really cute peeking out there. I don't usually put labels in garments because I find they kind of, sort of itch me and bother me a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I was quite happy to have an opportunity to use a label there. I think it just looks really sweet there, tucked into the lining there. Sorry, tucked into the canvas strap there, so. Yeah, that is my last entire bag. It was a really enjoyable sew. I think the kits have all sold out now, unfortunately. So if you're thinking you'd like to make your own one, you wouldn't necessarily be able to make your own one using the kit and, and this fabric. But Guthrie Garni are selling the pattern now as a PDF pattern that you can buy if you fancied getting some other fabric and making a last entire bag. Um, I'll link the pat PDF pattern down below in case you're interested. I definitely recommend it as a very enjoyable sew, and I think it's going to be quite a practical. Um, bag to have too so yeah that is my first make and yeah really enjoyable one the last entire bag so the next make that I've got to share is one that I finished right at the beginning of June so it feels like a while ago since I made this one and I haven't actually had a chance to wear it yet because the weather's been quite warm and I think this garment is probably suited to slightly cooler weather and it's a top I made using this pattern here which is the MET pattern by Jennifer Lauren Handmade this is a fairly new pattern. I think it was released a little earlier this year. And when it was released, what I particularly liked about it was this version here, this slash and piece bodice option, which is great for using up jersey scraps. And I knew I had a fair few smaller pieces of jersey kicking around that I wasn't sure what to do with them. And I thought this top would be a great way of sort of showcasing them and be able to enjoy wearing them. So I decided to get this pattern and I've made two versions to date. Last month I made the short sleeve version, and this month I've made the longer sleeve version. 
and it's just quite a cute jersey top really. It's got a fairly relaxed fit to it, it's not like designed to be tight fitting with negative ease, it's a bit more relaxed. And then if you make the short sleeve version, it's got this grown on sleeve with a little cuff, which you pretty much sew on a bit like you'd sew on a neck band. It's got a fairly sort of wide neck and it just sews up really nicely this pattern, it's a really enjoyable sew. I found when I sewed it, I wasn't sure how well all the slash and piece bits of the bodice would come together, but the notches are all spot on, I felt like they all matched up really nicely and it just yeah, came together really well. And it's got a good size range too, there are two size bands, there's a UK 6 to 24 and a UK 16 to 34 and each size band has a couple of different cup options, um, so when you come to look at your size you have to figure out your cup size as well as your general measurements um, to get the right fit for you. It's a really nice pattern and the version I made um, this month is this one here, so as I said it's a long sleeve version but still with a slash and piece bodice and it's just really fun picking out some fabrics. Um, I chose to use my main fabric for the sort of sleeves and top and back, this pretty, I don't know what colour you'd call this fabric, I'm not sure, a kind of dusky pinky mulberry toned fabric, I'm not sure. Um, this actually wasn't a scrap, it was just a piece of fabric I bought a while ago with no set plans for it, which is quite unusual for me, so I was quite pleased to actually make use of it. But all these other fabrics at the front are all scraps left over from other projects. I think this was originally a Freya top, which I still love. This fabric here I've used for a couple of different garments, one for my daughter and an old one for me I don't have anymore. And this stripy fabric here you might recognise from one of my more recent makes, I made a solar tee amount of this fabric, um, that one was for first for fabrics and I think they might still have it in stock in a few colourways, but the other ones I think are probably long gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I really enjoyed putting those colours together, I quite like how the sort of soft pink here picked out the pink in the roses here, and the striped adds a little bit of a different sort of look to it, um, and yeah, it just came together really nicely, and I'm looking forward to wearing this one when the weather cools down a bit, I think it works really well just tucked into a pair of jeans, or maybe paired with like a little skirt or something. I'll put a picture so you can see what it looks like on. In terms of sizing, I may be size 8, my measurements, my bust all pretty much fit into that size, so I went for straight size 8 with no adjustments, um, and that turned out fine, actually I think, I say no adjustments, I think for this version I did lengthen the sleeve slightly, which is a general standard adjustment I make, but I didn't actually lengthen the body on this one, I found it just fit quite nicely, it's long enough for me to tuck into jeans or a skirt, so I didn't need to lengthen it, but yeah, it was nice and enjoyable, so um, just comes together really nicely, so if you're looking for quite a cute jersey top pattern and you want to do a bit of scrap busting, I'd really recommend the MET. So the next make that I've got to share is actually three makes that all sort of match together um, and it's another set of garments I haven't shared on here yet because I've sort of just been working on these, picking them up and putting them down over the last few weeks and finally sort of finished them off this week. And it's a loungewear set that I've been wanting to make for a while ahead of going on holiday this summer. I thought it might be quite nice to have a matching loungewear set that I could just wear maybe for travelling, to getting where I'm going or just chilling out in hotel rooms or that sort of thing. And I was kindly gifted some fabric by Minerva, one of their French cherry fabrics, which I thought would be perfect for making this set. So that's what I did. So I've got three garments to share. The first one is a pair of joggers that I made using this pattern here, the Hudson Pants pattern by True Bias. It's my favourite sort of go-to joggers pattern. I just really like the fit of it and I find that the Hudson Pants are really comfy to wear. They're quite a sort of um, slim fit jogger, quite a slim leg with this oversized cuff at the bottom, elasticated waist, an optional drawstring and pockets with a little option to add a little pocket detail on them too. They're quite a like low rise jogger as you can see here, I think there is a hack available online to, or to sort of adjust them to make them higher waisted but I quite like the low rise, I find sometimes if elastic sits right on my tummy I find it a little bit restrictive when I'm trying to just feel really comfy so I quite like that it sits more around just the top of my hips, um, yeah I find that a bit more comfy to me. And it's a pattern I've sewed quite a few times before and I just feel like it sews up really nicely. I've made versions for my husband and my son so it's one of those patterns where I don't need to look at the instructions too much so I'm going through it. And in terms of sizing I think it's available in two size ranges. I've got the US 0 to 18 and I think there's also a US 14 to 30 size range on this one too. And I've always made the straight size too. Um, the waist measurement on that is one inch larger than my waist and the hips measurement is one inch smaller than my hips. I think the first time I made them I thought I'd just split the difference and go down the middle um, rather than grading between the zero and the four and it's, it fits quite nicely I think so I never bothered grading on this one, it just 
comes out quite nicely. So here are my Hudson pants in the fabric that I was gifted by Minerva. And I was gifted this fabric in exchange for a blog post, which is now up on the Minerva website. So I'll link that down below as well as the fabric in case you fancy checking it out. So here are my Hudson pants. As you can see, I went for this fabric. Yeah, it's a medium weight French terry fabric. It's like a loop back jersey. So quite a nice weight for like a joggers and a sweatshirt a set. It's not too lightweight like a cotton jersey, but not super thick and heavy. So I thought it'd be quite nice for like a summer loungewear set. And it's this pretty blue colour, which I guess is like a kind of mid blue tone. It's not as bright as a royal blue. And it was called Marine, I think it was, on the Minerva website. So I wasn't sure quite what I'd get when it arrived, but the colour looked like this on screen. So I think it was quite a good kind of colour likeness that they sh they showed on their Minerva website. But I wasn't sure with the Marine name, whether it might turn up and be a bit more aqua -y or have a bit more green in it or something. Um, but no, it's definitely like a really nice blue colour, which is what I was hoping for and what it looked like on the screen. Um, I just think it's quite a pretty colour and I do like a sort of dark, deep blue colour. So yeah, those are my Hudson pants and um, I pretty much make them per just like a straight size too, except I lengthen the legs just slightly because I've got, I'm five foot six. So, and I just, I quite like the trousers plenty long. So I think I might have added an inch or two to the length. As you can see, I've got the cuffs at the bottom. Oh, that's the only other adjustment I made. I just widened the cuff slightly because I used the fabric itself rather than ribbing fabric. So it's not got quite as much stretch to it as a ribbing would. So I just widen them slightly so it's easier to get on over my feet and I'm not sort of like sort of having to sort of yank them on too much. But yeah, they came together really nicely and I added on this um, white cord that I had um, in my sort of fabric notions cupboard. Um, and then I did the little eyelets here. I put those on using my um, Prim Vario pliers. I often get asked about what eyelets I use. So I'll, I'll include a link down below. I've got them on my, I've got an Amazon sort of favourites page where I sort of bookmark anything that I buy from Amazon that's sewing related just in case anyone else wants to go and have a little look and see what I've bought in the past and I've, I've put these eyelets on that list so I'll include a link to that list below in case you want to get some eyelets um, that are the same size. I find this size, I can't remember what size they are but it's a really nice size for fitting through a little cord and if it's quite nice and neatly on the Hudson pants. So those are the joggers I made, the Hudson pants and to go with them I ended up making two sweatshirts. I think I all asked for three metres of fabric, which looking at the pattern envelopes was how much I needed for a pair of Hudson pants and a sweatshirt. And then once I cut them out, I realised I had enough fabric left over to squeeze out another sweatshirt if I cut the pieces quite carefully. So I ended up making two matching sweatshirts to go with those joggers, which is quite nice. So the first one I made is this one here. And this is the basic version A of this pattern here. One of my favourite sweatshirt patterns, the Mile End sweatshirt. So it's version A here for this sort of relaxed fit sweatshirt um, with a crew neck. It's got a yoke at the back. It's got these cool sleeve darts on the sleeve, which is a nice feature, and these diagonal seam lines. Um, and it's designed to have quite a relaxed fit to it. And it's got a good size range, this pattern too. I've got the 0 to 20 US sizing version. There's also, I think, a 14 to 32 US sizing version too. So that is what I made. Um, when I got this fabric, I had that in mind. Um, I just made it pretty much um, per the pattern without any adjustments other than to lengthen the arms slightly. I made the size zero, which is slightly sizing down on my measurements. But when you look at the actual instruction leaflet inside this pattern, they've got the finished garment measurements on there and it shows this pattern to come up a little bit oversized. I've always sized down. So the only change I made was to lengthen the sleeves. I have on previous versions of Mylon sweatshirt lengthened the body a bit because I find on me, it comes up a little bit cropped. I do have a longer torso, but it does come up a bit cropped. So when I wanted to make a really cosy winter version, I lengthened the body a bit. But for this summery version, I thought I'd keep it a little bit cropped, so I didn't lengthen the body. Um, and I quite like where it sits. It just kind of sits, skirts the top of my Hudson pants, so it's not showing any midriff or the t-shirt underneath particularly too much. It just sort of sits right there at the top of the Hudson pants, so it shows off my little cord on them too if I'm wearing them together. So you can see it's got this yoke at the back, and I did some top stitching there. It's got the sleeve darts there. Um, and it's just a really nice sew, the Mylan sweatshirt. It's got these diagonal seams at the front. Again, a nice feature I've top stitched there to sort of showcase them a little bit more. I've sewed this pattern a few times before, so it came together really nicely. And I, I quite like this colour on me. I feel like it suits me well. Probably suits me better than the mustard colour I'm wearing today, which I don't think is one of my colours, but I don't mind because I just like wearing it anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel this colour suits my skin tone fairly well. Um, and yeah, that's my first version. I'll put a picture up so you can see what 
that combination looks like on my version A Marlin sweatshirt with my True Bias Hudson pants. And then like I said, I had just enough fabric to squeeze out another sweatshirt, which I was quite pleased about. It did um, yeah, involve some quite careful cutting and I wasn't sure if I'd have quite enough. I thought I might need to do a colour blocked sweatshirt for the second version if I didn't have quite enough fabric. Um, but it turns out I did have quite enough fabric. So what I decided to do was try a different view of the Marlin sweatshirt that I hadn't made before, which is this view C here which I'd always thought was really cute, but I just hadn't given it a go. I just made this version a few times because I loved it so much. But yeah, this is you see here and it's quite different. Although it's got some, some of the same features like the drop shoulder and the sleeve darts and the diagonal seam lines of view A, it's actually got this crossover bodice at the front and a hood and this little kangaroo pocket. And I thought it was quite nice, but I wasn't sure it, it would suit me, but I thought I'd give it a go and see how it turned out. So here is my view C version. As you can see, it's got the crossover bodice it's got this kangaroo pocket, which actually came together quite nicely. And the hood, I was a bit worried about the fabric stretching out a bit, particularly when I sort of sewed the neckline. But actually, I just followed the closet core instructions through for how to kind of this one comes together. And it came together really nicely. I think the finish is nice. And I don't think it has stretched out at all. And when I wear it, it doesn't feel like it's gaping too much at the front there. And also, I wasn't sure how deep the V would be and if I could kind of wear it on its own or whether I'd need like a top to kind of make sure I wasn't sort of showing off too much but actually the V isn't too deep I think it's quite nice it's a top I could just wear on my own or with a t-shirt underneath or on its own with it or with a t-shirt underneath so this is my yeah my view C again I made the straight size zero and the only adjustment I made was to lengthen the arm like with the other version I didn't lengthen the body so again it's a little bit cropped and yeah I don't have many like garments that have a hood and I never I don't think I've ever sewn a hood before I think I might have sewn a bit of a twirl of a hood for the Kelly Anorak that I still not go around to making. I got part way through the twirl for that one and it's kind of stalled quite a long time ago now. But I've never sewed like a jersey hood or anything. I've never made a hoodie or anything. So it was quite nice trying that and it came together nicely. You can just do like a bit of top stitching down the back, which is another little, little feature on it. So that is my view C version of the Mylon sweatshirt. Again, I've got a picture of that one, so I'll put that one up too. I quite like it. I'm not sure I like it as much as view A because I do love view A and it feels a bit more me. I'm not sure about the crossover style and the hood and whether it feels as much me. So I think time will tell whether I reach for this one or not. I have to kind of yeah see how I get on with it, I guess, because it was a lot of fun to make, but I'm not sure I'll get as much wear out of it as I will my other Mylon sweatshirts. But I'll let you know um, whether it's one of those things that's a bit more of a grower maybe. But yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I really enjoyed putting that set together. And I think I'll wear it um, a lot in the summer just for chilling out, traveling and that sort of thing. So yeah, that is my loungewear three piece set. <laughs> so the next makes that I wanted to talk about that I sewed up in June are another matching set. But this time it's not a matching set of garments for myself to mix and match. It is two matching dresses that I made, one for myself and one for my daughter. And this was quite a happy sewing project for me because my daughter is seven now. And I wasn't sure if she'd want to match with me anymore. I haven't made loads of matching clothes for us. I think I made a pair of dresses when she was quite small. And then I made another set of matching dresses, I think two summers ago. And she's grown out of her um, matching version from two summers ago now. I think it lasted two summers, but now it's definitely too short on her. And so she asked me if I could make another matching set for us. And I was really happy about that because I didn't want to sort of force it on her by any means. But given she asked, I thought, yes, let's do this. So we had to look online for some fabric and she picked out a fabric and I sewn the dresses up and we both really love them and actually the fabric's really cool. I thought she might go for something a little bit more novelty print that I'd be happy to wear when matching with her but I wouldn't necessarily wear after she grew out of her version. But she actually chose a print that I really love and I can see myself wearing in the future on my own as well so I thought that is quite nice. Um, I didn't steer in that direction, it's just something she chose herself so it turned out quite well. And this is the fabric she chose. This is her version of the dress. You might have seen this before if you watch my sort of weekly catch up videos. It's this really cute cotton jersey fabric. It came from Minerva. Um, I'll link it down below. I think it's still in stock. I think it's really pretty. It's got this sort of pinks in and she does love a bit of pink. And then also sort of purples and this sort of galaxy print. I post these dresses up on Instagram and a few people thought they looked like florals from further away which I hadn't um, noticed, but I could totally see it when they said it. So um, yeah, it's quite a pretty print, I think. It's sort of, yeah, it's interesting when you look at it closer up and further away, how it looks a bit different. Yeah, I loved all the colours on it. And this is the version I made for my daughter. 
It's just a basic little sort of jersey t-shirt dress with a gathered skirt. For the t-shirt bits, I use the a free pattern, the um, ABB Kids Tee by DIBY Club, which is a pattern I really love for kids. I think it goes from 18 months up to 12 years. It's got a slim fit and a regular fit option. I make the regular fit for my children. I find that's quite a nice fit on them. I think the slim fit would come up quite slim actually because the regular fit doesn't feel very wide. Um, so yeah, it's quite simple. I just cropped it off and added on little simple sort of rectangle, two pieces of rectangle gathered in at the waist. Um, and she really loves it. She loves a comfy jersey dress. So this is right up her street and nice for summer. And she's got quite fair skin. So I do like a dress that kind of covers her shoulders. Um, so yeah, to not risk her burning there or anything. So yeah, that is her version. And then for my version, I use this pattern here, which is an old favourite of mine. The McCall's, um, I never remember the number on the numbers on the, the um, big four patterns, the McCall's M7561. It's another jersey dress pattern, like a t-shirt dress with a gathered skirt again. So quite similar to my daughter's. This one, the version I made has a scoop neck. I think the version the model's wearing is more of the boat neck version here. I made this scoop neck version like this, pretty much this version with short sleeves. It's quite a versatile pattern with loads of different options built in, different skirt lengths, um, different backs even. This has got this deep, sort of deep um, scoop back you can make as well, different sleeve lengths. So yeah, lots of different versions included in this pattern. It hasn't got the biggest size range. It goes from a extra small up to an extra, extra large, and the largest size is from a bust of 48 inches. But I find it fits me quite nicely. I have tweaked the pattern a bit over time. I think I started with the size small, and then tweaked it a bit around the bodice to get the fit right on me. So it probably isn't exactly fitting as per the pattern anymore. Um, it's got quite a lot of negative ease built into it. It's designed to be fairly close fitting. So it's a bit more of a close fitting dress than my daughter's one where I've gone for a more of a loose, relaxed fit, which is what she prefers. But yeah, this is my version. It's got a scoop neck. Oh yeah, I think that's one thing I did change. Um, I added on a neck band around the neck because the pattern um, asks you just to turn under the fabric and sew in place. And I find that often results in the fabric stretching out of it. So I had a neck band, it's got the short sleeves, a nice gathered skirt. And when you sew the, the gathered skirt to the top, um, you actually sew with a seam allowance of um, 15 millimetres. And then you actually make that seam allowance into a little drawstring channel, not drawstring channel, into a little um, ch channel that you can put elastic through to add a bit more um, sort of spring and I guess a bit more um, sort of extra sort of, it holds up in place a bit more, I think, that elastic, rather than just letting the jersey fabric do the gathering. And I quite like that. I think the elastic makes it feel a bit more secure though, around the waist and really pulls it in there. So yeah, it's got a little elastic channel in with some fairly narrow elastic threaded through to create that nice sort of um, um, yeah, gathered waistband. So yeah, those are our matching dresses. They were a lot of fun to sew. They're both patterns I'm quite comfortable with. So they felt quite like nice, simple, straightforward sews. And I'll put a picture up for me and my daughter wearing them so you can see what they look like on. We've worn them out together and um, my daughter was really happy when someone complimented us on the dresses. And my son actually took that photo of us um, and he said we should also do a few action photos on the trampoline. So I'll pop up a picture of us on the trampoline wearing our dresses too. They're nice comfy jersey dresses, so perfect for having a bounce on the trampoline. Um, and yeah, I really love my version actually. I can see myself really enjoying wearing this in years to come. So yeah, I really enjoyed that make. And then my final sewing makes for June are two little crafty makes. I'm not sure you'd call them garments exactly, but they were fun little crafty projects um, and they've been coming in quite useful. And it was to make two sleeping masks. So these little eye masks here to kind of block out light when you're sleeping. This is one I made for me. And I also made one for my son because he saw mine and fancied one as well. And I made these eye masks using a pattern from this book here, the Make It Simple book by Tilling the Buttons. There's a pattern in here, I think it's called the Juno Pyjamas, and then just after the Juno Pyjamas, they added an extra little bonus pattern for a, an eye mask. So this is the pattern here. So it's quite a simple eye mask, but it's got these added little cat ears, which I didn't add on our versions, as you can see, but it was quite easy just to sort of, sort of round the pattern off and not include them. I went for just fairly basic eye masks, and they, they just sewed up really nicely. I mean, I find Tilling the Buttons instructions are always nice and clear, and this was a really simple little crafty project. So this is my eye mask here. I made it out of lots of scraps I already had. I used this cotton poplin fabric that I originally used to make a pair of pyjama bottoms, which I still have. So they match nicely with this eye mask. And then inside there is some um, bamboo wadding that I had left over for the, from the quilts I made for my children last year or the year before. I can't remember when that was exactly. But I had some little offcuts left, so it was nice to use that up. And then just a nice 
sort of fairly firm piece of elastic around the back. Um, and yeah, it's been really good actually. I've been wearing it every night and it's been really helping to block out the light and help me sleep um, when it gets light so early in the mornings here at the moment. So yeah, I'll pop it on a little bit so you can see what it looks like. It's quite a comfy fit. I feel like it fits nicely around my nose and there's enough coverage there to block the light out nicely. So yeah, that is a version I made for me. And then my son asked for a version too. So this is the version I made for him. For his version, I used this jersey fabric. It's a Where's Wally print jersey. You can see um, Wally over here, I think. There he is on this little, sort of, um, I don't know, piece of rubble in space. There's little aliens and all sorts. It's quite a fun print, lots of rockets and all sorts. Um, so I've made quite a few things for him out of this fabric in different colours. Lots of t-shirts and some pyjamas. He just really enjoys this print. So I have plenty left over. I've got enough for a few more t-shirts in the future um, as he grows out of his or as they wear out. Um, so yeah, there's plenty left over, so he chose the blue colour and I made this little mask. For his version, because I used jersey fabric, I interfaced it just to stop it stretching out. I didn't need to do that on my cotton poplin. But again, it's just got the bamboo wadding inside and a piece of elastic and I just cut his a little bit smaller because his head's slightly smaller than mine. And he's been using his every night too and he said it's actually really helping him to sort of um, get to sleep because I think it just helps him just to sort of properly switch off and actually just focus on going to sleep because it kind of, yeah, I guess it just takes away anything else you might be looking at around his room. And also he's found in the mornings, again, like me, he's found it's helping him sleep in a little bit more and sleep a bit more soundly when it gets light outside. So yeah, I didn't change the size of the mask. We tried my one on him and he quite liked the size on him in terms of the main mask front. I just needed to make the elastic a little bit shorter, but it was a nice speedy project, nice to be able to make it out of scraps I already had and elastic I already had, and um, they have been coming in very useful. And if you fancy making your own sleeping mask, I thought I'd mention there are quite a few free patterns and tutorials for making them if you search online. So you wouldn't need to buy this book. I think even Tilling the Buttons have their own online tutorial and free eye mask pattern as well. Um, I just used the version in this book because I had the book and I thought it'd be easier to get the pattern out and trace it off from the book rather than going on my computer and printing something new out. But yeah, I thought I'd just mention that. But they're a nice speedy sew, these eye masks. They came together really quickly and I'm really glad that both my son and I are finding they're coming in quite handy at the current time of year. So yeah, that was my final June make. So thanks so much for tuning in for my June makes video. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about what I've been sewing this month. And if you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. So I'll finish off here. So I hope you have a lovely day and manage to fit a little bit of crafting in somewhere in the near future. And I hopefully see you for another video very soon. Bye.